Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Um, good morning, everybody. My name is Nate Solomon. I'm a trainer here at Commerce Hub, and I will be your host here, co-hosting today's session. Uh, we're happy you've taken some time to join us today. Um, we're gonna focus on some tools available to you on Commerce Hub's Disco platform that you and your teams um, can use to help navigate the platform really all year round, but especially um, you know, as we get into the sales, the sales uh, crunch this holiday season, when hopefully everybody's experiencing higher sales volumes. Uh, like I said, I'm joined today by my my colleague Jordan. There's Jordan, looking professional, and there's me on vacation for some reason. Uh, Jordan Jordan is the technical support manager. I am an instructional designer here at Commerce Hub. And. Uh, with that, let's actually, Jordan, if you want to advance to the next slide, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, we're gonna start, like I said, with some of these resources, these helpful resources within the DISCO platform that can provide some guidance on some common questions that you might have. Um, we're gonna start with what we call the in-app walkthroughs. These walkthroughs are our on-demand training resources where you can find step-by-step -step guides to help you complete specific tasks in the platform. For example, if you need to know how to update your email address or ship an order or update your inventory, you can use these walkthroughs as great resources to show you exactly where to click in the platform to do those things. To see these available walkthroughs, you'll start by opening up the left menu using the menu button in the top left corner of the page. And on that menu, if you click the circle icon way down there at the bottom, right, the one with the question mark in it, clicking that icon will open the menu for of all the available walkthroughs uh, for you to look at. And Jordan, actually, if you want to pick up from there. Yeah, thanks, Nate. Uh, this is the menu that you'll see when you click on that, that question mark that's on the menu back there. And each of these walkthroughs listed here under each of the various groupings uh, are available for you to use at any time if you do need help, uh, you know, step by step, where to click instructions on how to complete these various tasks. So there's on the screen here, uh, if you need help adding a warehouse or uh, uh, setting up your ship mapping or anything like that that's listed on the screen there, you can click on that walkthrough and uh, get step-by-step -step instructions on where to go and, and where to click in the application. Similarly, if you need to know how to ship an order, you can review the walkthroughs in the order section as well. Or if you just wanna search for any of the, any of the available walkthroughs, you can use that search bar up at the top of the screen there. Okay, thanks, Jordan. Next, we'll talk about the Disco Platform Help Center. Now, this provides how-to articles with step-by-step -step visual instruction for how to take actions on orders and, and work with inventory. And Jordan, you can take it from there. Yeah, thank you again. Uh, everyone uh, has access to this Disco Platform Help Center. That uh, is available for all suppliers and retailers to uh, access just via a web browser. And you'll navigate to that by heading to support.disco.io. Once you're on that page, you'll see various navigation options, such as sections dedicated to suppliers and retailers, or at the very bottom of the page, if you scroll down from the top, you'll also find resources on recent releases and product updates, along with uh, various schema documents and things like that that you may need as you're getting started using the platform, or if you've been on here for a long time, updates, uh, recent changes that have released, and other things like that that are all documented on this page. If you do decide to navigate through the site and open one of the sections, you'll see a list of related articles grouped by topics. Uh, so for example, if you drill into the supplier section, each of the articles in the supplier section contains step-by-step -step instructions on how to use the platform. Some of those contain links to those walkthroughs we just discussed previously. So if you would rather use one of those walkthroughs instead of reading through one of the articles, again, those are linked at the top of most of the documentation pages. And if you click on that link, it'll take you right into the application and you can start seeing one of those walkthroughs and, and uh, seeing those step-by-step -step, uh, instructions as you work through those pages. 
Uh, also, on the same Help Center site, in the bottom right corner of the Help Center, you'll see a Help icon. You can use that icon to initiate a live chat conversation with a member of our technical support team here. We usually, we usually respond to those chats in about one to two minutes, depending on the volume of the day. But this is a great way to uh, engage with the team and get responses to your questions as quickly as possible. Uh, you can see that live chat button there in the corner of the screen. Just click that button, enter in your name, your email, and some details about your question, and we'll respond to you as soon as we can. Okay, great. Uh, the final resource we'd like to cover here is our Supplier Holiday Prep Guide. Now, this is available to you on the Disco Platform Help Center. The guide itself contains a, a curated list of resources and helpful tips aimed at helping you, um, helping to ensure your success. As I said before, really all year long, but especially, you know, during, during the critical holiday season for everybody. The resources range from tips on setting up your email notifications. There is a guide on escalating urgent production issues. Um, we encourage you to review all of this material and take advantage of the resources here that we've posted for you um, within this holiday uh, prep page. As we conclude the webinar, or you know, after we conclude the webinar, we will post a recording of everything we covered today right onto that page. So feel free to send the link to other people at your company, uh, coworkers who might benefit from, from the review of these resources as well. And with that, actually let's pause for a moment uh, just to see if any questions come up regarding those three resources. Uh, we ask if you do have a question, just please use the panel within WebEx there. At the bottom right of your WebEx interface, you should see a Q&A panel. Uh, if you put your questions into there, they'll be sure to pop up for Jordan, Jordan and I to see. Uh, if you use the chat, we don't necessarily see everything that's coming in there. So if you would just use the Q&A, that would be great. And if there is a question that comes in that's more specific or specific to a certain retailer um, that you work with that we can't answer publicly here, uh, we ask that you just reach out to us after it, afterwards, reach out to our tech support team. We'll be happy to address any questions you have. And it looks like we have a question here, Jordan. How do I open the in-app walkthroughs? That's a great question. Um, when we just covered a few moments ago, and, and that'll be covered in the recording again that we'll post online. And just as a summary, once you're logged into your Disco account, if you open that menu that's on the left-hand side using those three lines in the top left corner, in that menu, you'll see a question mark at the bottom of that page. You can click on that to see all of the, the walkthroughs available to you listed in that, uh, in that area there. And feel free to click on one of those there, and it will take you through, again, those step-by-step -step instructions in the portal. Okay, and I did see someone was saying they had some audio issues. They weren't hearing us. Uh, again, this is going to be posted on the supplier holiday prep page, so you'll be able to, to view a recording if you were having some technical problems um, during the webinar here. Um, check in our Q&A. looks like no further questions at the moment. If something comes up, feel free to put a question into there. We'll do this again at the end. Uh, we'll address any questions you have. Um, for now, Jordan, let's go ahead and move on to our FAQs. We put together some of the frequently asked questions that Jordan's technical support team um, has received frequently in the last few weeks. Um, compiled them here just in case uh, some of these issues are pertinent uh, to what you all are, are encountering when you're working on the Disco platform and thought that maybe these could answer some questions. So the first one we're going to talk about here, uh, let's learn more about the automatic invoicing feature. Yeah, thank you, Nate. Uh, this uh, automatic invoicing feature is designed to make your lives just a little bit easier during the holiday especially, but during the rest of the year as well and really is intended to remove some of that invoicing pain and let the, the Disco platform take care of that for you uh, if, it's, if it's possible based on some of the requirements of your program. This may not work for everybody um, if you have specific customizations or nuances to your invoice, but for, for most people, if you're sending in generic invoices, 
uh, we'll, uh, we can take those and automatically create those for you without having you send in a separate invoice file or do that individually in the portal if you're working through it that way. Uh, setting up this feature is also very easy in Disco, and you can do this for any retailer connection, any retailer that you're currently connected to. Uh, to access the feature, just open the left menu and click the automatic invoicing option under settings. And then to get started with the feature, first select the yes option at the top of the page, indicating that you want to use the feature. And after selecting that option, you'll see a number of customization options appear farther down the page. For example, you'll need to choose an option for how the platform will set your invoice ID, whether we use your PO number or a consumer order number, or maybe a randomly generated invoice ID for each of these automatically created invoices. You'll also need to review your terms and handling fees. And if you need to set those uh, for each of the invoices we create, you can do that. And then toward the very bottom of the page, you'll need, to, you'll need to acknowledge the logic that we use to set the total cost of the invoice uh, for each of these invoices that we create. When you're finished, go ahead and click change, uh, save changes at the bottom of the page, and that's it. Uh, just a couple of notes as you're reviewing this feature. Um, if you do decide to use it, you want to make sure that your internal invoicing team isn't also sending invoice files the automatic invoice we create and the invoice file you send will conflict and will reject your invoices because the order has will have already been invoiced by the time you send your file. Uh, so if you do decide to use this, just make sure you don't send an additional invoice file as well. And then this feature won't automatically invoice past orders. Uh, this will only take into account orders that are shipped moving forward as well. Okay, great, next question. How do I add or update my inventory? Yeah, uh, hopefully this is a, a question that uh, many people are running into over the next couple of months as you keep your inventory updated, especially as we get into this busy holiday season. And there's a couple of ways that you can do this. Um, if you're a browser supplier, you can start by heading over to your inventory tab. And from there, you'll see two options in the top right corner, a create SKU option and an upload file option. And depending on which route you'd like to take in the portal, just pick the best route that suits your typical path for uploading inventory. And we'll dive into each of those options here. And just to take it a step further, these can really be applied to, to a number of different options within the Disco portal. So if you need to upload shipments, there's a similar upload file button on the orders pages that you can upload your shipments. Same thing with invoices, uh, cancellations. Uh, we'll look at inventory today, but if you want to extend this uh, functionality into other areas of the platform, then you can also do that as well. And, um, if you want to add an individual SKU, you would start by clicking the Create SKU button in that top right corner on the inventory page. Um, from there, make sure you input the, the required information such as vendor SKU, availability, and other fields which are highlighted by those red asterisks or highlighted in red. Once you've finished, scroll to the bottom of the page and click the Save Changes button. Uh, some of those individual requirements will differ by retailer, for example, depending on if you need to provide a UPC or an EAN or a partner SKU. But in general, as long as you're on that page and you're providing a SKU and a quantity available and some of those other required fields, you can save that SKU and, and move forward. Okay. The second option is to upload your inventory in bulk using that upload file button on the inventory page. Templates are available on this page to download if necessary, if you don't have one already. Once you've completed that template, you can upload your file on that same page using the choose file button. And then by clicking that green inventory or catalog button, depending on the type of file you're uploading. Okay, thanks, Jordan. Next question we have is in our FAQ here, how do I quickly ship orders? Yeah, thank you, Nate. Uh, this, uh, uh, the fulfillment page in the Disco portal is probably gonna be your best option to do that quickly and to uh, quickly ship a bunch of orders in batches. You can also do this using a file upload like we just discussed. If you want to upload that file, there is an upload file button. You can download a shipment template file fill out that file and upload that as well. But if you would like to do this in the portal on the fulfillment page, you can use the check boxes to the left of each of the orders on the page to quickly select a number of different orders. And then once you've selected a bunch of those up toward the top of the page, there's an add tracking numbers button. 
and clicking that will take you through a quick screen for each of the orders to add a tracking number, set your, uh, your carrier and method and your service level code for each of those orders. And we'll quickly walk you through each of the orders that you selected and have those shipped uh, in a short amount of time. Okay. The, using, this, uh, using this kind of batch uh, shipment process can make sure you get those, through those orders quickly and move you through that, uh, that workflow as fast as possible, especially when you have a bunch of orders in the holiday season that are coming in. Okay, next question we have, how do I set up new order alerts? Yeah, these, uh, these new order alerts and really any kind of notification are key for the holiday season as you're working to ensure that you ship the orders on time and get notifications if there's any orders that haven't been shipped or had errors as you tried to ship those or invoice those. And if you need to update your notifications or just review the notifications to which you have subscribed, Go ahead and open that left navigation menu again and click notifications under the settings section. On the following page, you can review each of the notifications to which you are currently subscribed. You can unsubscribe by changing the frequency to never. Or if your retailer has opted to set up any SLAs, uh, such as inventory SLAs or order SLAs, you can also review those uh, performance based notifications by selecting that option under the notification section. That page will look very similar. You'll set the, the frequency at which you wanna receive those notifications and subscribe to those. Uh, but making sure you set up those notifications is again, very key to ensure that you're getting those notifications on time and tracking those and shipping and closing out your orders. Okay, and our last FAQ here, le less of a question, more of just a, hey, who would I contact given these various uh, scenarios that you may encounter? Jordan, if you just want to go through that slide. Yeah, thank you again, Nate. Uh, we have uh, listed a couple of, of common uh, uh, questions that we get here, and we've tried to group these into a couple of different uh, couple of different sections here to help clarify whether you're reaching out to the Commerce Hub support team, the, your retailer, or maybe both, depending on, on uh, what the question is, right? So questions such as, uh, how do I get paid? You know, how are my invoices paid? Uh, you know, I'm experiencing some delays in shipping and my order is due to reduced staffing. Uh, I marked the order as shipped, but I need to, to cancel it instead. Or I have zeroed out my inventory in Commerce Hub due to special circumstances. You know, maybe there was a, a storm or something like that that came through, right? And you're unable to fulfill orders. Um, all of those, you're, you're, of course, welcome to reach out to, to the uh, Commerce Hub support team with any questions that you have. But really, those questions on that left column are better directed toward your retail partners to ensure that you're getting paid on time, that uh, they are aware of any shipping delays you're experiencing and may need to update their customers, the ones that ordered the products. Now, all of those fantastic uh, questions to send back to your retailer. Uh, that middle column where we're referencing some of the more commerce of specific questions, you know, if you need help processing an order or how to fix errors with your inventory file, uh, editing SKUs, anything like that uh, are, are fantastic questions to send over to one of our technical support team members. And we'll get back to you as soon as we can, get your question answered and, and on your way. And then if there's things uh, such as your warehouse is closing, uh, again, due to inclement weather or anything like that, maybe you're just closing it for, you know, the, the end of the Christmas season or something along those lines. Those are, that's a fantastic question to send to both, uh, both the uh, Commerce Hub technical support team and your retailer to ensure that everybody's looped in, we're aware of your warehouse being closed and uh, we can go ahead and, and uh, pull your items off the website or the retailer can if needed to make sure you're not getting any orders during that time. Okay, excellent. Thank you, Jordan. Um, at this point, let's open up the floor to questions if anybody has. Uh, like I mentioned before, please use the Q&A panel within the WebEx environment to submit a question. That way it'll pop up for Jordan and I to see. If we're unable to address the question in a public forum like this, uh, we ask that you reach out to us afterwards. Uh, but we will monitor the Q&A here to see what questions are, are coming up for us. Now, I'll go ahead and take a couple of these that are listed in the, in the Q&A section here. So. One, just kind of a follow up to uh, the auto invoicing feature that we brought up earlier on whether auto invoicing 
uh, works or does not work for items that have different discounts. And that is correct. The, the auto invoicing does not work for some of those more unique scenarios. Right? The auto in invoicing feature is meant to be fairly generic in how it creates those invoices and individual discounts for items and things like that won't be taken into account when we create those invoices. Um, another question on uh, if uh, you have a proxy, whether you load inventory into that proxy or the regular login. And uh, if you're loading that inventory through, a, through an upload, like we discussed, clicking that upload file button, you would do that through the, the regular logins, not those proxy logins. Uh, you'll log into each of those individual accounts and send in the inventory that way instead. Uh, questions on uh, how to cancel an order, which is a great question. Uh, there's a lot of resources on our help center for uh, how to cancel an order. Um, if you want to reach out to our support team afterward, we can certainly direct you to the right place on those resources. Or if you want to use one of those walkthroughs, uh, make sure you open that menu on the left hand side there. Click that question mark and there is a walkthrough there for how to cancel an order in the portal and you're welcome to use that. And if you have any follow up questions from there, please uh, reach out and we'd be happy to, to respond to you from there. Jordan, I see one came up. Can any user access the Disco Platform Help Center? Yep, absolutely. Uh, that Help Center is available online at support.disco.io. And any user logged in or not, whether you have a Disco user account or not, can pull up that support site and start searching through the articles there. Uh, to access those walkthroughs, you will need to log in. You will need access to the Disco platform to see those. But the uh, the step-by-step -step articles, the guides, and all those resources that are available on the support site are available for any user to pull up at any time. OK. Uh, one, one question on uh, how frequently inventory needs to be uploaded during the holiday season. Uh, I would uh, recommend connecting with your retailer on that to get a little more specific information. But in general, we do recommend that at least once a day, you're sending an inventory during the holiday season. Uh, if you're a high volume supplier <clears throat> that's doing a lot of orders during the holiday season, even more frequently than a couple of times a day, potentially for uploading inventory in that season. Uh, you know, the, the more orders you sell, the more your inventory has the potential to get out of sync very quickly between what you have and what the retailer has. So definitely more frequently if you're a high volume supplier during that holiday season. But if there are maybe more specific and individual questions to work through, uh, both the, your retailer and the Commerce Sub technical support team would be happy to assist you uh, in a more individual manner on that. How do I gain access to the Disco platform, someone's asking. Yeah, if you do need access, if you need a user account and don't have that access today, uh, go ahead and reach out to your uh, to the administrator of your account. If you're not sure who that is, you're welcome to reach out to our support team and we'll point you in the right direction for that. But uh, as long as you have access to that admin at your, uh, at your company uh, on that Disco account, they can set up a user account for you, send you an email to set up your username and password. And from there, you'll be able to log in and uh, start seeing some of those resources or start filling some of those orders as needed. Uh, there's a question on um, how we enter multiple tracking numbers for a single order, uh, which is a great question. Uh, you can use the, uh, the help resources to do that. You can use someone on our support team to do that. But in general, uh, if you're in the portal and shipping an order, there's an add tracking button that you can click. And once you're in there, you can add multiple packages to that same order to split out individual line items or individual quantities into each package or each tracking number, and then go ahead and save the shipment from there. Again, we're speaking generically. We don't have a, you know, a demo set up to walk you through that today, but if there is information you need on that, reach out to our support team. We can either point you to the resources for that, or you're welcome to search our help center or one of those walkthroughs, which can also show you exactly where to go to do that. OK. Anything else, um, Gordon, that you see pop up there? Yeah, may, maybe one last question, then we'll go ahead and move on on, uh, on if uh, the Disco platform reduces inventory as orders are shipped. 
And for the majority of retailers on Disco, yes, that is correct. Um, some retailers have opted not to use what we call that auto documenting feature, which usually happens because a retailer is already using that feature on their end. They're already doing their own auto decrementation in their own systems outside of any of the Commerce Hub platforms. And so they've chosen not to do that on the, on the Disco platform. Uh, but yes, if your retailer is using that feature, when an order is placed, we will reduce that inventory and auto decrement that from your available inventory and then send that update back to the retailer. Okay. I think we'll wrap up uh, the Q&A there. We appreciate the participation. Those were some great questions. Um, and that actually wraps up the webinar. We hope you uh, gained some information. Uh, feel free to send the link that we're going to email out to all the participants. Send, them to, send the link to other people at your company who may benefit from a review of these resources. And again, it will be posted on the holiday prep page for you to review. Um, Jordan, just want to thank you for your expertise uh, with all these questions. And everybody have a great day. And again, thanks for joining us. Thank you all. Have a great day.